Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to learn about impulse and momentum. Okay. Now, impulse and momentum, uh, to me, for some reason, when I hear the word momentum, uh, immediately there's a little tiny voice going, "You go, girl." So, uh, if I say that sometime during the video, just don't mind my weirdness. All right. So, uh, we're going to first start off by asking you to describe this picture. Right? What do you see? For me, I see a dog that is running. Uh, if you are a dog person, you might know exactly what kind of breed this is, but uh, I unfortunately don't know. I like dogs, though. I really like dogs. Okay, so we can say that the dog is running, and with that statement, we can actually come up with a physics equation. We have a dog which is represented by the variable m for mass, and it is running. And we denote that with um, the variable v for velocity. And from there, we actually can come up with the momentum equation. Momentum is equal to a mass that is moving, or m times v. Okay, So momentum itself is a, uh, the definition is the quantity of motion of a moving body that is measured as a product, which means multiply, um, of its mass and velocity. Okay, Now, uh, a little note there, momentum uh, is represented by the variable p. Not m, because m is mass, so p for momentum. All right? um, the units are kilograms times meters per second or newton seconds right? either or so take your pick personally I like newton seconds but um, oftentimes I'll just interchange it as kilogram meters per second alright okay so another way to think about uh, momentum is this thing called impulse and before we get into the actual definition of impulse let's take a look at uh, baseball gloves it's almost time for, for baseball season so let's take a look um, on your left, we have a old-fashioned catcher's mitt, and in the middle, we have a more recent, more modern catcher's mitt, and on the right, we have um, mitts for fielders, okay? Now, if we were to take a look at these pictures and the pictures from before, what kind of comparisons can we come up with? Think about it, okay? Take a look at this picture. And then take a look at this picture, all right? So um, the fielder is out there in the field, you know, catching the balls hit by the, the, the batter, and the catcher, you know, is catching the balls thrown by the pitcher. Okay, so there is a big difference. Um, hopefully some of you came up with the ideas that the catcher's mitt is big and it's, it's, it's cushiony. It looks like a pillow, whereas the fielder's mitt is... Um, Thin compared to the catcher's, and there's not actually a lot of cushion compared to the catcher's mitt. Okay, and you have to think form and function. You know why is that? And physics physics can explain it. Okay, um, here's a couple of the reasons. If you think about it, a catcher needs big, huge gloves because the uh, baseball player, average baseball player, can throw what 90 miles per hour, 95 miles per hour fastball, and Baseballs are hard, and so if you, if you catch it with your bare hands, oh no, there goes the bones in your hands. But if you catch it with something as big and cushy like a, like a pillow, um, the, the fielder, the force felt on the hand will be as great. It won't hurt as much. Okay. Um, so here we have a video to actually demonstrate this little physics uh, concept. Now this is a Guinness Stunt World Steve Record, Gunther from Denmark holds the and they're world jumping for the off a high really dive. high building. He jumped from a height of 342 feet off of a crane onto an airbag. On hitting the airbag, the speed of his impact was a phenomenal 90 miles per hour. That's impressive. Now let's take a look at the... Um, the quote unquote airbag. It's huge, right? And that's because, you know, we don't want the guy to die. Simple as that. Um, that's also a reason why uh, in our cars we have a safety feature that saves our lives. When we get into a car accident, or hopefully we don't, but you know, in the case that we do, there are airbags everywhere, and the airbags actually soften our blow and it saves our lives. And the physics equation actually will show us what happens. Okay. So the concept and the principle that we're talking about is this thing called impulse. Uh, impulse is represented by the letter J. 
Of course, it's represented by the letter J. I, I actually don't know why. Um, but it's a capital J. Don't confuse it for the unit joules. Okay. But the equation is the average force times a certain time interval. So if I were to break down that equation, it's basically saying how much force split up over a certain amount of time. Uh, a way to think about it is like a salary, okay? You get $5 per hour, where money or the dollars would be like the force and per hour is your time, okay? So uh, when a baseball is thrown into a glove, there's a certain amount of force that gets um, averaged out as it's going into the glove, okay? So you can experience a great force in a very short amount of time, or you could experience the same amount of force just divided, okay? Uh, so we can actually use that equation and link it with momentum to come up with this impulse momentum theorem. Uh, basically what it says is that the impulse of the system is equal to the momentum of the system, all right? So take a look at this equation. We'll be working more with that equation. Um, now, the right-hand side of the equation is actually one-half of the conservation of momentum equation. And in the following videos, we'll actually do a couple of examples with that. But before we get there, you need to know the conservation of momentum. So conservation of momentum is just like the conservation of energy or conservation of mass. Within a system, okay, when something is happening, the momentum that you start off with, uh, whether it be with one object or two objects, now in this equation here, it shows momentum for two objects, okay, has to equal to the momentum after the event. So for example, um, for M1V1 and M2V2, that could be like a like a baseball bat and a baseball, okay, two different objects, M1, M2, they're both colliding into each other, okay, and after it, the ball goes flying and the bat, you know, keeps on moving. So that's the before and that's the after, okay. So the, uh, another way we could look at it is how much energy you have in the beginning must equal to the energy that you must have after. Same principle goes with momentum. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, make sure you watch the next two videos where I'll be going over a couple of practice problems for two types of conservation of momentum or elastic or inelastic collisions.